Hello students. So in the previous class uh, we started with um, uh, chaos theory and uh, we were looking into the solutions uh, of uh, differential equations which exhibit uh, chaotic behavior and in that context um, we uh, sort of started with um, uh, talking about uh, uh, certain uh, properties and definitions related to uh, the chaos and um, as the at the term itself uh, means um, chaos that means the differential equation the system of differential equation may not exhibit um, uh, how to say a, a, a nice behavior over the time right so basically uh, chaos theory has something to do with uh, what you are doing with the initial conditions so like um, two uh, two solutions starting from uh, let's say a very small neighborhood of the initial condition then they may exhibit uh, dra dramatic changes uh, over the time so that means uh, they may diverge exponentially um, and uh, this actually leads to uh, the terminology uh, chaos theory and from there we have uh, uh, terms like attractor and all that um, I also gave one or two examples uh, um, where we uh, saw that for what values uh, of the parameters that are involved in the differential equation you get a stable solution or you get um, uh, the convergence of the solution then for what values it starts showing the chaotic behavior um, in that context, uh, I can give you one more example which is very famous in uh, chaos theory that is the uh, Lorentz equation and this Lorentz equation actually leads to something called butterfly effect. So that means uh, when you simulate uh, under certain conditions on the parameters, um, you get a nice uh, simulation which actually looks like a butterfly. So I will just uh, uh, give you the set of equations. I think I already defined Lorentz, Lorentz equation but uh, nevertheless. Uh, a Lorentz system basically um, so a Lorentz system um, is a the Lorentz system is basically system is a, a system of differential equation is a system of first order differential equation system of first order uh, differential equations DE differential equations and uh, it was first it was uh, uh, first studied by Edward Lorentz Edward by Edward Lorentz and uh, what he did he considered uh, basically he was trying to uh, model atmospheric uh, uh, convection and uh, something related to um, atmosphere so he had uh, a system of equation of this type so dx dt equals to uh, uh, sigma times uh, y minus x and then he had uh, dy dt is equals to um, x times uh, rho minus z uh, minus y and then he had uh, dz dt is equals to uh, xy minus beta z right so basically uh, this can be called as equation number one two three so equation one two three if you talk if you want to know the physics of it so equations uh, one two three um, actually relates so relate to the relate to the properties relate to the properties uh, of a two dimensional two dimensional fluid layer uniformly warmed and warmed from below uh, uniformly warmed uh, from below um, and uh, cooled and uh, cooled from above so he was modeling this phenomena and uh, he ended up getting this set of equations and then um, uh, obviously um, it's um, 
uh, it's a system of uh, we have nonlinear equation and uh, then he tried to do the simulation and uh, of course uh, with the help of other mathematicians or uh, scientists he was able to simulate this and uh, for sigma uh, rho equals to uh, 28 then uh, sigma equals to 10 and uh, beta equals to 8 by 3 so these are some of the parameter values a simple solution in the Lorentz attractor so a simple solution in a simple solution a simple solution in Lorentz attractor so basically this the solution of Lorentz equation uh, exhibit chaotic behavior and for these values uh, these parameter values a, sim a simple solution can be given by I mean um, if we plot it so suppose I hope I'll be able to <laughs> plot it correctly so this is x axis this is 0 this is y axis so more or less uh, it had uh, this kind of behavior so something like like this and then like this like this so it, it, it the solution keep on uh, forming this uh, orbit and uh, basically um, we um, we can say that it uh, sort of has uh, this butterfly structure right and uh, this is the kind of uh, behavior of the solution of course there will be a z axis so long x y then x z and then y z will get this nice uh, butterfly type of structure and uh, that is uh, actually telling us uh, about the orbit of the solution and uh, if we choose the values uh, different than uh, these values then maybe we get uh, a chaotic behavior of the solution right so this is a very nicely uh, simulated example and because of this uh, butterfly like pattern we can say that this is a butterfly effect of the Lorentz equation right so Lorentz equation is also um, exhibit I mean it also exhibit uh, chaotic behavior and it is one of the popularly uh, studied uh, example in uh, in um, uh, chaos theory if you want to know more in detail how this simulation is done I mean um, uh, what are the further properties uh, then um, I would advise you to look into the textbooks that we have uh, mentioned in the references so there you'll be able to find more examples in detail right here we can draw more loops along xz yz and xy but uh, this uh, sort of gives you an idea that what I'm talking about right okay so now uh, let's go to the next page. So now that we have uh, uh, looked into Lorentz um, uh, equation, so basically um, we uh, talked about uh, the local divergence, and uh, in the context of local divergence, uh, we sort of gave gave the idea that uh, what do we mean by when we have the two solutions um, which are in very close proximity to the initial condition and uh, how do we define the local divergence then we also learned uh, in order to look into the local divergence uh, we uh, how do we linearize so with the help of jacobian we consider the linearized equation and from there we motivate the con definition of exponent divergence uh, of uh, of the solution and um, uh, we um, we can also uh, write so let me just uh, um, so the definition that we gave last time was uh, something like this let us start with the recapitulation so we had uh, an equation of this type x that x dot equals to f of x right so this is the vector equation and it is said to be locally divergent at x0 uh, is said to be is said to be locally divergent at x0 divergent at x0 uh, if the solution starting at x0 if the solution starting at x0 at x0 and the solution starting at and the solution starting at uh, starting at at any arbitrary point any arbitrary point in the vicinity in the vicinity of x0 diverge in the vicinity of x0 diverge exponentially right 
and then we derived uh, exponentially then we derived what do we mean by this terminology right okay now uh, if uh, uh, if we go uh, uh, for the discrete system so if the if, if the system is discrete so for discrete system the same definition can be uh, motivated can be mot motivated in this fashion so for discrete systems uh, discrete time systems uh, a completely similar similar uh, definition or derivation definition or the derivation that we showed in the previous class definition or derivation uh, can be given and uh, we can write like we can write as previously as previously uh, as previously uh, what can we write x i is equals to x 0. So, previously we took help of exponential here we can write summation j running from 1 to n c j lambda j i and uh, v j. So, where lambda j's are the eigenvalues eigenvalues of the Jacobian matrix evaluated at x 0 at x 0 and uh, we conclude that in that case and we conclude that in the discrete time case the discrete time case divergence divergence occurs if at least one of the lambda j has absolute value larger than 1 larger than 1. Obviously, if lambda j has a value uh, larger than 1, then you have lambda j to the power i. So, uh, as i tends to um, let us say infinity, then basically um, you have lambda j uh, I mean basically will be divergent. Right. Uh, so, next, uh, if we talk about examples in that perspective. So, basically um, examples so basically uh, we know what is our tent map so we have already defined the tent map we have defined uh, the logistic growth model then we have also defined the lorentz map and hanon uh, hanon map so for the tent map for the tent map map or equation whatever you want to say we have uh, f dash x is equals to 2 mu when x is not equals to half right. So, this implies that so this implies that for mu greater than half if mu is greater than half then mod of f dash x will be greater than 1 and therefore it will not lead to a stable solution or the solution will not converge actually. So, it will actually lead to a, a local divergence right. So, this map this map is locally divergent locally divergent at all in that case it does not matter what x 0 you will choose because then your solution is always divergent. So, at all x 0 belonging to 0 comma 1 right and uh, this also holds this also holds for x 0 equals to half although 
Fdas is not defined is not defined there because any orbit any orbit starting there leaves this point right so even at x 0 equals to leaves that point so even at x 0 equals to half um, this uh, local divergence property is maintained although the f, f dash x may not be defined but uh, in that case uh, whatever solution that is starting uh, around half it actually leaves that you know? and uh, since it is leaving that point it is actually leading to uh, a divergent solution and therefore if uh, mu is greater than half then we have this uh, local divergence criterion. Similarly, for a doubling map, uh, the, the 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 map I have to uh, right, the for the doubling map for uh, for so for the doubling map we have uh, f dash x is equals to two. Uh, if x is not equals to half so here the, this implies that so this implies that since f dash x is greater than 1 so the convergence part is gone so this implies that map is locally divergent implies that the map is locally divergent divergent at all x0 belonging to 0 comma 1 right similarly for uh, logistic growth model for uh, logistic growth model for logistic growth model we have uh, f dash x equals to mu times 1 minus 2x right and uh, here the convergence actually depends on uh, both mu and x so here uh, the convergence depends both on mu and x right so that is for what mu and x f dash x mod will be greater than 1 right so i mean through some numerical simulations and all it has been found that uh, for mu less than for mu less than uh, let's say mu infinity which is equals to 3.57 is it 8 uh, it looks like 8 so this should be 3 so 3.57 so 3.57 um, the convergence to the for mu less than 3 the convergence to the periodic solution occurs periodic solution may occur may occur right uh, and so on and uh, the, for uh, x0 equals to 0 and x0 equals to 1 the local divergent local divergence local divergence divergence occurs for 1 less than mu less than mu infinity but not for x x0 equals to half but not for x0 equals to half right so depends upon 
uh, which point we are starting right. So, if we start from x 0 equals to 0 or x 0 equals to 1 then it is giving you the local divergence property, but if you start at x 0 equals to half right in that neighborhood the small neighborhood. So, then in that case uh, the solution will be um, convergent in a way. So, this uh, um, sort of uh, giving us an idea that even for uh, this kind of uh, models like a tent map or logistic map we can be able to at least say that um, where the solution actually showing the chaotic behavior where it is convergent where it is not. So, this is the long term uh, behavior or long term uh, predictions that we want to make about the solution which actually shows us um, the chaotic behavior right. Uh, so, if you are changing the initial condition a little bit. Okay. So, similarly we can talk about uh, Henon map or Lorentz equation also and uh, um, if you want I can. So, for, for example, now that we are talking so for Henon map the Jacobian matrix the Jacobian matrix the Jacobian matrix uh, of the Henon map. map is given by j x equals to minus of 2 a x 1 b and 0 with eigenvalues lambda plus minus equals to minus of a x plus minus square root of a square x square plus b. So, these are the eigenvalues and uh, since lambda positive is always positive is always positive this map is locally divergent is locally divergent in the whole plane. right and uh, um, and uh, the Henon map has two stationary points that can be determined from the right hand side itself stationary points and uh, both the points both the points are unstable are unstable for b is equals to 0.3 and a greater than 1.0580 um, right. Um, determining the stationary point should not be difficult and also for unstability um, we can see directly from the solution that uh, forward values of b and a it will lead to the unstable solution. And uh, finally, for the Lorentz equation we can find out the, uh, the butterfly effect equation we can find out the Jacobian of j x y z which is given by minus of sigma uh, plus sigma and 0 then r minus z minus 1 minus of x and y x minus of b right. So, if this is the equation then um, I mean basically uh, if this is the Jacobian and we can find out the eigenvalues uh, for the eigenvalues. Uh, so, basically a point at the outer side of the wings uh, is example 
20.5, and uh, the eigenvalues, the eigenvalues at this point are 0.8 plus 20.8 i. Um, I is this, this is uh, I the complex number, then we have a uh, 0.8 minus uh, uh, 20.8 I and uh, minus 15.3 and uh, the real, the real eigenvalues which is strongly negative indicates that the orbit starting outside the wings are attracted to, uh, to it very uh, rapidly. And uh, the relatively small real parts of the complex eigenvalues indicate that the divergence in the wings is small indeed, right? So basically, the the, the negative part of the eigenvalues uh, tells us that um, um, the the the, uh, con the orbits that are starting uh, outside the wings are attracted very rapidly, uh, which we saw. And uh, the relatively small real part of the complex. Uh, uh, eigenvalues um, are basically indicating that the divergence of along the wings are indeed very small. So, basically uh, depending upon what kind of uh, initial conditions that we are choosing, um, we can see that uh, the local divergence or the convergence uh, of the solution uh, towards the attractor, right. And uh, for Lorentz equation, the derivation is uh, actually or the uh, simulation is actually very interesting. So, you can uh, try to do it uh, in MATLAB or uh, in um, uh, Python if it is possible and from there you can simulate the effects right of the Lorentz equation. Um, so, these are some of the uh, problems or the examples that we uh, wanted to talk about uh, from the um, how to say this local divergence point of view. So, we know that uh, in chaos uh, theory, we are basically looking at the alteration in the initial condition that leads to the local divergence and uh, if it is locally divergent, then for these four or five basic examples, we are trying to see um, for what values of the parameter the solution actually becomes locally divergent. Um, and where it is uh, convergent and um, I mean what will be the values of uh, such parameters involved in that equation. And uh, motivated from this example, uh, from these examples, we are basically uh, sort of transitioning towards something called Lyapunov exponent. So, Lyapunov exponent is also important because it sort of tells us uh, that uh, I mean how do we get this uh, local diver I mean how do we get this uh, um, the stability the convergence and uh, for what values we will have the local divergence and uh, this determination of Lyapunov exponent there is actually a specific formula for that uh, how do we calculate the Lyapunov exponent. So, in the next class I will start with the Lyapunov exponent and we will continue the discussion and uh, see how this uh, chaotic behavior of this solution can be connected with uh, Lyapunov exponent. So, I will stop here today and we will continue this discussion in the next class. Thank you.